A Place Called Home by Lori Wick Chapter 2 Mark Cameron's brothers, Luke and Silas, rode toward town. The warmth of the day, even at 7 a.m., told them August was to be as hot as July. The men were headed to Mark and Suzanne's. Luke was to catch the 8.15 train for Chicago. Things were still pretty quiet as they rode into town. They tied their horses in front of a large, white, two-story house that had served the town's medical needs for nearly 40 years. Joseph Cameron Sr. had converted the parlor into an office and with great pride had turned it over to his grandson Mark upon completion of his medical training. As the men walked to the front door, Luke's eyes went to his brother's work clothes. After Luke caught the train, Silas would be headed back out to the horse ranch they worked together, north of town. Luke was dressed in a suit that usually left the closet only for church. He envied Silas his comfort. Suzanne answered the door and each man hugged her. We missed you last night at Julia's. Where's Mark? Silas asked. He's upstairs with the patient who came in last night. The fact that a patient was upstairs spoke of a serious injury. Each man knew better than to question Suzanne. She was the soul of discretion, especially concerning Mark's practice. She turned to the brother-in-law whose face mirrored her husband's. Luke, will you take some things to Paul? It's not very much if you can fit them in your case. Sure, I'll work them in. Can you stay for breakfast? She asked. I thought you'd never ask, Silas spoke as he moved toward the rear of the house. Where's my niece? Suzanne answered as she and Luke followed him. She's supposed to be in the kitchen setting the table. Emily was hard at work when the three entered the big sunny kitchen. Her mother's voice broke through her concentration. Emily, your uncles are here. A big smile broke across the little girl's face, and with an excited squeal, she moved around the table toward her uncles. Upon spying the way her uncle Luke was dressed, she stopped in her tracks. Is this Sunday? No, Silas answered. Emily continued to frown in her Uncle Luke's direction until he came over and picked her up. How come you're dressed like Daddy today? She, as well as the rest of the townsfolk, counted on the way the Cameron twins were dressed to tell them apart. I'm going on the train today. Will you be gone for my birthday? I'm afraid so, but I'll bring you something from my trip. Emily was more than pleased with this answer and was hugging him when her father joined them in the kitchen. Soon all five of them were seated at the table. Mark prayed, asking God's blessing upon the food, Luke's trip, and the patient upstairs. After the prayer, Luke asked how serious the patient was. We're waiting out a fever right now. Is it someone we know? Sil Is it someone we know? Silas asked, concern in his voice. No, she's not from around here. At least I don't think she is. Mark's eyes went to his daughter, and the conversation moved discreetly to Luke's trip. He would be gone about three weeks and planned to see Paul, the youngest of the Camerons, at the seminary he attended in Chicago. He was also to look into buying two mares and a stallion for the ranch. The time moved quickly. Mark went back to work, and his brothers were again on their horses and headed for the train station. Things were bustling at 8 a.m., and the platform was crowded as Luke bought his ticket. The brothers talked as they waited for the train. You did get over to say goodbye to Grandma M, didn't you? Luke laughed at the question. Let's put it this way, Silas. If I hadn't, I'd better not come back. Both men laughed, and the train blew its whistle. They said their goodbyes, and Luke moved along with the crowd to board. He settled into a seat, and then waved out to Silas as the train pulled away. With the train gathering speed, he reached into his bag for the book he was reading, and settled back for his trip to Illinois.